You good? Okay, come here. You wanna come sit on my lap? Sorry, we're kind of far from the camera because it's hard to get my face and Pudge's face in the frame when he wants to lay down on my lap like this. But we are back and I am joined with my trusty Pug Pudge who I am hoping to really um, show a lot in this week of plant to do's because I know that you guys have missed him and honestly I really miss him in my videos too. Um, it's kind of like the highlight of editing. I just get really tired of it just being me all the time. I love being able to see this little guy. I'm sort of weaved in a little bit. So yeah, hello. We are back with another week of plant to do's. And it's, I think it's gonna be a chill week to be honest. I don't have a ton going on. It's just a lot of filming and sort of getting ahead on YouTube for my upcoming California trip in about six weeks. Yeah, just I'm in the thick of repotting. I'm in the thick of YouTube filming and getting the place cleaned up and yeah, I just, it's a lot of this and that, but nothing nothing like the last week of plant to do's where it was like event after event after event and lots of friends and going places. Um, I really don't have any plans to be anywhere for the next little while, to be honest. So we're just gonna be here at home, taking care of plants, doing just plant chores, and um, I think I'm gonna purge a little bit and get cleaned up. So yeah, it should be, should be a pretty, uh, pretty chill chill week I think in terms of what's going on today so today is Saturday a new video went up this morning it is performing so well thank you guys so much it is my most I think it's the easygoing philodendrons in my collection I think that that's a video that a lot of people have been waiting for um, it's actually been more requested for me to do my favorite philodendrons but I just wanted to hold off on that one for a while uh, so I just decided to do my most easygoing for now and I finished filming another YouTube video a couple minutes ago and now we're just jumping into this one I don't really plan on doing a whole lot today just because I'm tired from filming. It's very hot today and I kind of just want to hang out with my buddy and my husband since I've been working a lot. But uh, before I peel off all this makeup and jump into bed, I do want to kind of tidy up my plant room a little bit because I've got to film another video tomorrow and do more repotting and do more. <laughs> and do more repotting tomorrow. So I kind of just want to get my plant room in a good place. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what's going on. Do you have anything you'd like to say, Pudge? Anything? Nothing? I can feel the pool of drool on my, on my arm. My little buddy. I love him so much. He's such a good boy. Uh, I gotta get up, babe. I gotta get up now. You know, the one way I can get him up is to say the T word. Pudge, do you, you can't even see his face against my shirt. Do you want a treat? Would you like something delicious that rhymes with schmardines? Do you want a treat? Treat? Let's go get a treat. <laughs> So like I mentioned, I've got some vessels here that I just I just have some stuff I need to put away. I did wash all of these vessels and got them um, kind of clean. This one is not very clean, but going back anyway. So while we're here, let's give you an update on what's going on in my world. Um, since the last week of plant to do's, I have not seen any of my friends. I feel like we're all, I would say besides Aaron, we're all sort of the same way. Like when we see people or we're doing a lot of sort of social things, we just get burnt out and just need some time away from um, each other. Not in a way where it's like, oh, I'm tired of you. It's just any kind of social act, any kind of socializing, regardless if we're super comfortable with each other like honestly it's like being with Alice or Jean or Aaron it's like being with my siblings you know it's not like I have to 
put a lot of energy and effort into being with them. It's just very easy. But really, any kind of social interaction just it wears me out. So yeah, in a way, I am kind of glad that we're not constantly making plans all the time to do things and go places. And also, like everyone's been crazy swamped with work. So yeah, it's been a while since I've seen them. I don't really know the next time that we are planning to hang out and do things, but yeah, hopefully soon. I mean, oh, it is nice to, you know, see them every once in a while, but we definitely go long periods without seeing each other. Um, Alice's birthday is coming up next month, so of course we're gonna have to do something special. We always go to lunches or dinners for our birthdays and do our little gift exchange. And I still need to figure out what I'm gonna get Alice for her birthday. Hmm. But yeah, other than that, I took two days off of work, like any work, felt like YouTube and my actual job, freelance, just literally sat in my apartment and twiddled my thumbs and it was difficult honestly i have a hard time just not doing anything so i ended up just sleeping i slept for like five hours which is nice caught up on my sleep but then woke up with like a fat migraine but yeah i'm definitely ready to get back into work now and i'm feeling a little bit more sort of re-energized it's just i've had some really bad depression days lately. Um, yesterday was really bad and I don't know, I just literally like walk around the house yelling, I'm sad, I'm sad. <laughs> I've just been trying to like, you know, stay on top of plant care things while I'm also trying to take care of myself, which can be very difficult on some days, but and, you know making it by I am happy that the weather is starting to get a little bit nicer because I'm telling you guys my mood just completely shifts in the summer and um, I'm just ready for more sun but it was funny yesterday when I was feeling sad I was like I kind of wish it was raining so that I could just go lay on the park bench and feel the rain on my face and feel like I'm in a movie but of course it was like hot and sunny. <laughs> I have boxes of plants next to me that I need to address and I have no desire to do it whatsoever, truly. I am honestly, I am so excited to get to Cal- Ow, <laughs> funny bone. Um, I'm so excited to get to California so that I can give my family their dang plants and I can reclaim my space again it was so nice the first time i went to california because it was like all the plants left in my collection were just mine and yeah right now i'm just i'm holding a lot of plants for them and i'm propagating a lot of plants for them so at the moment i am feeling pretty overwhelmed with the amount of plants that i have and i'm planning to do a youtube video specifically on this topic soon it's just trying to find the right time to film it but I, I'm definitely in that space where I'm like there's too many there's too many because I want to have more time to watch my shows I want to get back into reading books like I get into these moods where I want to take care of my plants and I have so much fun taking care of plants but then I hate when you sort of have the amount in your collection where it's like a chore to have to care for them and you're almost just always playing catch up and it's not something that you're like proactively doing so i want to get back into that place where i'm like i have a good manageable amount and um i i'm not feeling stressed about like watering and stuff like that we'll get there it's just i'm having a hard time really Wow. I'm having a hard time figuring out who I love, like who I love love and who I don't necessarily need. I just, I have, I'm pretty fond of everybody in my collection at the moment and it's, it's really difficult to pinpoint like who's got to go and well, I don't know. I don't want to have any regrets later. That's sort of where I'm at right now and I think that that's kind of 
something I'm always going to not struggle with, but something I'm always going to run into or that we're always going to run into in this hobby is like, because there are so many plants out there and we feel like the desire to want to own it and we know the joy that they bring us, um, I think always kind of reminding yourself or checking yourself and how many plants you have in your collection it's just something that comes with the territory. I try not to feel guilty about it though because like I used to really beat myself up about like oh I'm just collecting because it's like an addiction or I'm only collecting because it like brings me like happiness in the moment and then I'm back to being like depressed. Um, I, I don't really like that narrative that goes around lately about like how people are just just collecting just to collect and like people that have like a massive amount of plants are just like you know they're not really loving their plants or whatever I, I don't like I just don't like that I really don't I feel like everybody collects for their own reason everybody has sort of a different reason why they got into this hobby everybody has a different relationship with this hobby and I, I don't think it's anyone's place to cast judgment on why people collect or how many plants people collect like let's just let's just let that be their business and and just focus on yourself focus on your own collection and just don't let anyone make you feel guilty about anything i just i don't know i'm i'm so i'm just so tired of like the toxicity that i see even just being thrown around in very passive aggressive captions or passive aggressive videos like i don't know i don't even know if i make sense or you guys know what i'm talking about but it's just this feeling that i've been feeling for a while so i only really subscribe to a very little amount of people on instagram like i'm following probably about 300 or 400 people but to be honest i have muted a, a lot of people um i like the opportunity to go to their page and go through my following list kind of see what they're up to, see what plants they're growing. Yeah, I, I don't keep everyone's notifications on all the time. I really try and filter what I'm seeing on a daily basis. I think sort of being overwhelmed by the plant community sometimes can just feel really overwhelming. So anyway, that's, those are just my thoughts. I need to figure out a good way to um, organize all my lazy pull stuff. like. All of these straps that I reuse and stuff like I sort of just have it tucked under this cabinet right now there's like a there's a little drawer in here and there's just there's a gap between it where I just kind of shove everything but it would be nice to like have everything sort of organized and um, I don't know maybe I'll utilize some kind of binder or like filing something folder I think before I sign off for the day, I know this was a quick day, but I, I've had like a full day already and I'm just kind of ready to wind down. But I wanted to give you guys an update on some of the things going on down here. So these are my seedlings, some of them, not all of them. I have a lot of dead seedlings around, but I've kind of just focused on these ones right now. Um, yeah they're getting so big like some of them are just maturing so much don't mind the fertilizer stains on them but let me show you some of the ones that i've potted in individual pots uh where did i put it oh here this is the first one that i ever potted just on its own and it's so much bigger than the rest of the seedlings and it looks very very much like a crystal mag or a crystal but um it is very dark and then here is the second one that I potted up. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but they look so different. Like, like look at this one. This one does not have as much silver. It very much looks like the dark forgetty eye. And then this one also looks like a dark forgetty eye too. There's like almost no silver venation. So I'm just sort of really loving like how different these seedlings are so far no variegated seedlings which makes me sad but you know i'm just happy they're alive most of them <laughs> and then the last thing i wanted to show you were my scalp room corms oh my gosh okay so uh if you guys have been following this journey for a while you know that i chose different substrates for all of them 
tree fern fiber is the only one that has not sprouted a leaf but it was the first to kind of emerge out of the corn but then it kind of just stopped so it was weird that way and then I have one in soil that also kind of popped out of the little corn but has not grown a leaf but then I have two in moss that sprouted very fast look at them they're so adorable ah that one is not variegated it's just um which in McCall it's just what is that word that word Uh, it has to do with water. Gutation. God. Gutation. It's just gutation. So you can kind of see the translucent part under here. And the water will like seep out of the edges of the leaf blade. So some people think that that is variegation. It's not variegation. It's just gutation. But I did get excited for a little bit when I saw it. I was like, ooh, and then I was like, oh, never mind. And then I've got two in pond here that sprouted and then one in soil. So they're doing well. I mean, um, they've all sprouted. I haven't had any die. It's just three of them, three or four of them are still dormant. And I think I actually have two in here. Um, I will say that the ones in moss are the rootiest like look at those roots on these corms compared to like oh pond is pretty rooty too actually um i feel like soil is not as rooty you can see some sort of on the edge there but not as much as the other substrates so this has been a really really fun experiment and um, i'm kind of excited to see how much these little guys grow over the next little while but I am just very, very happy to have more scalp rooms because these are such magical little alocasias. They are one of my favorites and um, yeah, I'm excited to take you guys along. One more thing before I go, I promise. So this one is an Anthurium Cyrenoi Velvet and I've had this one just kind of in the back of this shelf for a little bit and it was covered. I didn't know what was going on and I did not even know that this new leaf came out and um, this would be probably the healthiest first leaf that has grown on this anthurium shelf in super low humidity. So I am just beyond thrilled that I finally have some anthuriums that are waking up and are actually pushing out new growth in these conditions, in these harsh conditions. Um, but look how chunky it is. So cute. Like the little overlapped lobes. I can't. I can't. Look how like they're just so adorable. And I just love how like chunky it looks. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I just, I didn't really expect this one to wake up as fast as it did. But you know, we're here and I'm actually glad that it's fully acclimatized to the low um, humidity and sort of high temperatures in here. Hopefully I can keep this going. All right guys, so I'm pretty spent for the day. I'm just kind of ready to wipe off my face and get tucked into bed. Midday naps are like my favorite, favorite thing in the world. I don't know what is so different about them, but taking a nap like anywhere between like two o'clock or four o'clock is just, oh, I just love that feeling of being in bed and it's, yeah, it's my new thing. So don't forget to rest, don't forget to take a nap and uh, I will see you guys bright and early Sunday. <sighs> Hi guys. Wow, wow, wow. It has been a day. I look haggard. <laughs> Um, so it's Sunday, obviously, and I've probably been awake for a total of three hours today, and it is 6.15 p.m. Um, to be fully transparent with you, I've been having a pretty rough few mental health days, and, um, 
usually when I have like a depressive episode like two days already feels like torture but we're going on day five now and um yeah it's like so mentally exhausting I just we'll talk a little bit about that but I just um yeah it's already nighttime and I've the only thing I've done today is finished editing a video. I got it up on YouTube and it's in the queue now. That's great, but I still don't feel accomplished. Like I like ugh. I I just want to be with my plants and repot. I wasn't even going to film today, but I just feel like I need to just push through it. So, I'm here, but now it's like who do I repot? I was gonna do some rehabs today, but I'm like, with my mental state, I don't please don't give me a rehab. Like, give me something that makes me happy. <laughs> so I had just recently featured this one in uh, the plants I own that I still don't understand. And yeah, I am going to try a little bit harder to take care of this guy. So I want to get him on a pole. Yeah, so I was like, I shouldn't film today because I feel like such a downer and just, ugh. I have like no pep in my step. I have no, I only had like the willpower to put on half of a face today. I was like, I can't be bothered with a winged liner. Don't even, don't even attempt it, Sherman. So yeah. Okay, um, you can't see the plant, so hold on. Yeah, I just kind of felt like I was <laughs> in such a dumpy mood that I didn't want to like project it onto you guys, but um, here I am, I'm trying. It's really, really hard to have days like this, like consecutive days where you just feel, oh, I don't really want to get into like the nitty gritty of the details, but Essentially, over the last few days during this very random depressive episode, because I've actually been doing really well, it's just sort of going through those feelings of, like, it's one thing to try and have your feelings validated or your, like, mental illness or whatever it is validated by the people around you, uh, whether it be your partner or your parents or your siblings or your friends not that you need anyone's validation but it it helps to have like a good support system you know it's one thing to get validation from them but it's another thing when you like go through these weird periods of like invalidating yourself like I've been so accepting of everything that I deal with over the last few years but I go through these periods where I'm like, you're just a big baby. Like, you, why do you feel this way? Like, you are so dramatic. Just get over it. Just be happy. Stop freaking moping. Stop feeling bad for yourself. But it's like your brain just like does not want to be happy. I don't know. It's like, those are sort of the feelings I've been working through the last few days. And I just feel so crappy. Like I wish I wish that like people with depression or whatever could like put everything we feel into like a bottle so people could just like feel it for a sec just to know and then um yeah, cuz when you like explain it out loud it almost sounds like nonsensical, you know. It literally took everything in me to get out of bed today. Like I had zero desire to like check on my plants or go on social media or whatever so basically after i finished editing this morning i just went back to sleep and i slept until whatever five o'clock and then the only reason i woke up is because my family facetimed me because we facetime every night when my when my niece eats after i got off the call i was just like looking at my phone and I looked at the date. I, it had just registered to me what day it was and it was my best friend's birthday, my best friend in the whole world. She's basically my sister and it was already nighttime and I hadn't greeted her and then I just felt worse about myself. And I think it's really hard to sort of portray the things that um, I feel when really I'm only 
posting two videos a week and I film usually 98% of the time that I film it's like I'm either like forcing myself to film um, or I just film on a day where I feel good so like to people who just come on this channel or just go on my Instagram or I'm not being very serious most of the time like you just kind of think like oh she's good I have a lot of days like this where I just I spend the whole day in bed. I just waste the whole day in bed. And, and something that I really, really struggle with that I recently talked to my psychiatrist about was just this whole feeling of, and honestly, I, I feel like it's like the generation I was born in or just the time, just, just, in the world we live in now, I have such a hard time detaching um, success and happiness with productivity and uh, revenue, like um, spending your time to make money. If I have a day where I'm like, I'm taking a day off, like I'm taking a day off, I've worked 90 whatever hours this week, I'm just gonna take a day off because I earned it, I deserve it, I'm entitled to it, like everybody is, you know, to rest. And I'll take a one day off and then just, I will just have the worst thoughts about myself, just feeling like I'm such a loser and I wasted all this time and I could have done this and I could have done that. And it's just this toxic, toxic, sort of narrative or mentality that I have that I'm really, really trying to work on, but it's, I don't know, it's hard. So anyway, yeah, it's just a lot of things. So on top of sort of mental health stuff, it's like I just have a lot of work to do internally, like constantly. It's just a day. I'm so sorry for being a downer, you guys. I'm hoping that at some Point this week I sort of snap out of it so that this video isn't like two hours of me being depressed but I think that it is sort of important to show times like this too where like I really am not feeling great and uh, attempting this lazy pull is actually very bold of me because when I get in days like this I'm very impatient and little things set me off a little not, I wouldn't say fun, but a fact about me is uh, I actually used to have some pretty bad anger issues and it wasn't really truly until I met, not met, <laughs> until I, you know, adopted Pudge or became Pudge's mom that I really learned to like find calm and find peace within myself. But before that, it was like pretty bad to be honest. And sometimes I catch myself in those moments of just pure rage and it's mostly being frustrated at myself, not with anybody else. So having like those tendencies and those feelings resurface randomly is also like such a mood killer or feeling like I'm going backwards and not like all the work that I've been doing over the years is, was for nothing and basically um, just being flooded with negative thought after negative thought, you know, it's really hard. It's really exhausting to live that way. Maybe tomorrow I'll put stickers on my face and paint my nails a crazy color so that I feel somewhat more alive. I'm just not, I'm not feeling it, you guys. I'm just not feeling it. I don't know what it is. I just reused this lazy pull from, I can't remember what I used this for, but I did unpot it on camera. So maybe you guys remember, but yeah, I'm just reusing this guy. Oh, I'm not gonna lose my cool, I'm not gonna lose my cool.
Okay, so besides all this mental health talk, um, here's what else is going on. I, uh, right before, right before my nap, I, um, found a pretty bad mealybug infestation in my, um, red stuff. Baby mealies everywhere, absolute nightmare. So obviously I wasn't going to sit there and just like, you know, go in with the Q-tip and try and get them all. So I basically put them all in my shower and just give, gave them a full like alcohol mist spray. And I'm just going to keep doing that till they go away. Uh, so currently all of my Hoyas are in the shower and that's not ideal, but you know, I knew that I had introduced mealy bugs into my red set at some point so i was kind of just already in that point of acceptance that probably an outbreak was on the way but yeah the good news is is that like mealybugs don't really kill your plant in the same way that like thrips or spider mites does so when i look at it that way it's more of just like a nuisance and just kind of grosses me out rather than me being like on full like alert that um or me being on high alert that all my hoys are gonna die uh so yeah i have to handle that this week i wanted to get the hoy cabinet cleaned out anyway i've been wanting to film my part two of my rudsta cabinet but i'm just i'm having a hard time finding some of the things that i need like there are certain air plants and stuff that i i wanted to add and and stuff uh but i can't find them anywhere so i've just kind of been putting that on hold for a while i am gonna grab some new hoyas from lauren so i think probably by july that part two video will go up but at the same time i didn't really want to rush it the reason that i branded it as a part two part one part two was because i knew that obviously the cabinet wasn't done it was like half filled and half styled you know so i didn't want people thinking that was like the end result or whatever but at the same time i also knew that the finishing of it would take a while because obviously i'm not just going to buy a bunch of hoyas um just for the sake of filling it like i want to bring home hoyas that i love i i want to do it at my own pace so if you guys have been wondering about that video um that's sort of what's happening with with it not that anyone is like keeping tabs on my videos or anything <laughs> i don't think so so okay we've got a lazy pole in and now i just need to fill it with moss i forgot to show you but there's a nice little aerial root that's pushing out um, of the stem so yeah it's kind of like the perfect time for this thing to get on a pole and I'm just honestly I, I'm determined to get this thing a little bit happier in terms of my confidence it's probably like a solid 4 out of 10 but you know what a 4 out of 10 is better than 0 so we're just gonna we're gonna go with it what else do I want to repot? Like, I hate repotting when new leaves are on the way and everything is growing. I mean, obviously it's a great problem to have, but at the same time, it's like, I can never find my perfect window. Like, even my anthuriums are growing like crazy. I'm just going to be very careful to not break this aerial root, because I've done that before. Like, while I was putting moss in, um, the aerial root just, like, snapped right off, so... I'm definitely more careful now sometimes I've mentioned this before but I do things very like in a rush sometimes that's like my tendency so I just need to <laughs> remind myself to like cool it like chill out it might seem like an overkill but I think I'm gonna add another strap because I want to lock in that humidity oh I can see a fungus now I'm not this bitch <laughs> sound I made. Where'd he go? How did he escape my wrath? Or is that him? I definitely was not a cat in a previous life. Sometimes making these plastic lazy poles really take every ounce of my attention and all my brain cells. So 
Anyway, so it's in. If she doesn't like this, she's she's toast. She's done. She's gone. I'm just kidding. But hopefully she likes her. Hopefully. You guys would have seen this in that video as well. The plants I own that I still don't understand. This is the Cynantia marnerianum, aka the bundle of sticks or twigs plant and it has seen better days. It's rotted in some places. Some of them are just fully drying out. Um, it has mealy bugs. I can see some right now. So I think I'm just gonna get the rehab process started, which is taking it out of this substrate and then I'm gonna do like a full alcohol soak, which is something I hate, but it does help. And I'll probably leave it in there for several hours and then I will repot it. But yeah, this thing is just, I think that it's truly on its last leg. So I gotta do something now before it's too late. I definitely have some like dead, dead guys. Like, look at this one. <laughs> it's like super dieted. Dieted in the middle here. Sorry, it's having a hard time focusing. So I'm not quite sure I'm gonna try and salvage this little stick. I don't know, the rest don't look too bad. That was like the worst one. Oh, I don't like touching this because it has mealy bugs on it. So gross. I don't know if there's root mealies or if it's just on the plant. I don't see any in the substrate, so that's good. But also there's a lot of perlite in here, so maybe I'm just confusing him. I think that I'm actually going to try rehabbing this one in a tree fern fiber mix just because the root system has mushed off a bit it's not looking super great and I just want to sort of get it um, stabilized before I plant it back into soil and I will do something with drainage next time in a more like sandy well draining mix so yeah I won't opt for my normal aeroid mix or succulent mix this bath is gonna look really mucky in a second because there's soil all over the roots, but I'm basically just gonna add, like I'm eyeballing some alcohol. I'm not quite doing a 50-50 mix, but I just wanna add enough in there so that these dang mealy bugs freaking get the hell out of my life. And then I'm just going to, um, I feel like I have one stem in here that is completely dried out. Where is it? This one is dead. Cut this off. Cut this off. Sorry, you can't see anything I'm doing. If you've got a busy day tomorrow, I'm going to attempt to film another YouTube video and um, also get my Hoyas in order and um, clean the Hoya cabinet. So hopefully my um, serotonin levels are, are higher tomorrow. My energy levels are higher, fingers crossed, because I do have a lot to do this week and I just wanna keep the momentum going because I took the Wednesday off, obviously that Wednesday that I would have missed an upload because Again, I knew that I was not doing well and I needed to just kind of reset and take a break. And then also I just wanted to get ahead more. Um, so now that I'm like two and a half weeks ahead of the schedule, I just want to keep it going because the goal is to have enough videos uploaded in the queue by the time I leave for California so that when I'm gone, I don't have to worry about editing. I don't want to have to take my computer with me. Um, I just want to be able to kind of like cruise through my California trip, have enough videos in the queue, um, and then uh, also have enough for when I get back because my parents are going to come back with me, I think, and I want to be able to like spend quality time with them and not be filming and working the whole time. So if I can basically get like a month and a half ahead, that will put me in a good place. Oy. Well, I've been recording for a long time. So um, I'm going to just let this soak for a couple hours. I can already see some of these stupid idiot mealybugs floating to the top. I'm sorry, I have no sympathy. They're just, ugh. 
They're dreadful. There's a whole world out there and why do they want to be on my plants? Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna let this soak. Um, not gonna do it overnight because I have found that like sort of over soaking it in this alcohol mix, just the plants, they will react badly. So yeah, a couple hours and then I'll get out of here. And uh, if I decide to film again, then I'll show you, but I do plan on putting this in a tree fern fiber mix, which is right here. I just kind of have some pre-made pre stuff ready. So uh, yeah, that's what's going on. But if I don't see you later tonight, then I'll see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed for me that I have a better day. Uh, but it should be a pretty plant-packed day tomorrow. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm sorry if I was a mood killer, but um, yeah, this is just real life. And I appreciate you guys sort of letting me be honest and just sort of open on this channel and uh i just don't want to also give the impression that it's always like rainbows and sunshine over here because it's definitely not so yeah thank you guys so much um this sort of strange online relationship i have with you guys definitely means more to me than i think i could ever convey so yeah, thank you so much. I love you and I'll see you Monday. I look so rough. I'm back. That actually was quite nice besides the fact it was very very windy but I got some mail so there's only one plant related mail but this is something that I get asked a lot so we're going to talk about it briefly again I'm going to unbox it off um, out of the frame because I always have a hard time hiding my address this one's from The Ordinary I just restocked on some of my face stuff but I forgot the most important one, which is my moisturizer. So that sucks. The first thing that I got was more of this squalene cleanser. Although, oh yeah, yeah. This is my absolute favorite, favorite in the whole wide world. Um, face cleanser. It also just melts away all your makeup and it's like an oil based cleanser so you just like must it's like you put it on a dry face you just massage it in it becomes like this oil and it's so nice and then i got i haven't tried this before but this is a primer it says that it's a high adherent silicone primer and it is a surface smoother and a blurring surface smoother and primer so Excited to try that one out and then of course I had to restock on the best glycolic acid toning solution I am running dangerously low on mine so um, oh, I'm so happy to have a new bottle I'm just so choked that I forgot my freaking moisturizer how did I forget that and then the last thing it was a very small haul it was just stuff to restock on um i'm hoping i got the right color but this is a foundation i finally ran out of the one that i use which is clinique so i got the um light medium neutral i am hoping this is my color i think it might be too light the only thing is that my other foundation is too warm so this is slightly cooler or like more natural than the one I'm currently using. So, I mean, hopefully it works. Anyway, just wanted to quickly highlight that. So the next one is from Era Propagation Diaries. I believe that's her Instagram and I will throw up her handle right now. She reached out to me on Instagram and um, asked if I'd like to try out some of her Hoya trellises. And I get approached a decent amount of times for people who like just want to send me stuff um specifically moss pools and um hoya trellises but if you guys are not new to this channel you know that i'm not 
really into trellising my Hoyas. I just don't like the way they look. But these ones, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. So I'm really, really excited to try these. These are the trellises. I will open that last. But oh, I was hoping she would send me one of these. I have, I have been after one of these scoops forever. You guys, these are always sold out on Amazon. I can't find them anywhere. They don't sell them at stores. And I really wanted this specific kind of scoop for my Leca and my uh, Lechuza Pond. So thank you, Era. I... Oh, I'm like overly excited about that. And then, aw, comes with little clips for the trellises. So let's open the trellises. I love this packaging tape. It's like a uh, holographic, is that the word? So, okay, so these are the Arca trellises. You guys, these are so cool. The reason why I don't like the standard trellises are because i don't know they just look a little cheap and tacky to me like the ones that are made out of bamboo the ones that are made out of just like the regular metal um so when i saw these i was like hello these are like the perfect minimalistic you can't see it it's invisible and you guys know i'm all about invisible with like the lazy pole and stuff so Okay, I didn't know she was gonna send me so many. Era, geez Louise. Okay, so I did say that I really enjoyed her, um, I think this is like the smoked, smoked, oh, wrong one. This is like the whoa, smoked black or something like that. Because my, obviously my red stud is black, so I thought this would be like a nice um, color for it. So let's look at the sizes here. So I think I'm seeing two different sizes, right? Oh, three, three. Um, oh, ha, 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 hold on. Okay, let's, let's, oh. Okay, we've got four different sizes. So she sent me two of these big boys. It, you can't see it, it's amazing. Um, I'm excited to use these. This is a trellis, this is, oh, this is the same, this is not the same size. So the gray one is a little bit smaller. And then she sent me this one that's like narrower and tall. And then these like little ones. And then this really, really thin one or like skinny one. I will say she also has um, another color and it's like, it sort of looks like this, like this um, packaging tape, but as a trellis. Uh, I just, I do like that one, but I think these ones will sort of blend in my cabinet a little better. So um, I was gonna wait to use these in the part two video, but I think I'm gonna use some today since I am tending to my Hoyas. And I'll just maybe get two of them on a trellis and just show you guys uh, what it looks like. So thank you so much. I, I love these. I love them. These, this is like the, the best trellis I've ever seen, honestly. I love, I love the way it looks. It's very like my style. And um, gosh, she was so generous. I thought she was going to send me like two trellises. She sent me like five million. So thank you so much. You guys follow her on Instagram, check out her shop. Yeah, she's she's really, really, really sweet. And her stuff is her stuff is great. And you guys have to get one of these scoopers. These are like I serious, they're like the best scoopers out there, in my opinion. I much prefer these over the like the one with the handle. So yeah, it's nice because this sort of um, this shape it makes it easier to pour it into smaller vessels um, because my actual scoopers that I have are like probably this wide. So it just comes out of the whole front, whereas this one will kind of just pour out in a, in a much smaller amount. So yeah, okay, cool. Now I'm excited, I'm reinvigorated. Um, I'm going to just get set up. I'm gonna bring out all of my Hoyas and I don't know if I wanna sit here 
I think maybe I'll go sit closer to the dining table and we will take a look at some Hoyas and then after I'm done, I will get ready and start filming my second video and I'll maybe show you some behind the scenes. I'm not 100% sure yet. As usual, I don't really know Hoya names. Well, for some reason, only some stick with me and it's just, I just can't remember. So I think the first one that I'm going to show you is this Hoya Abovada and my goodness, this thing has grown so much since I've acquired it. Um, I'm not sure if some of you guys remember, but I first took this home in my uh, Back from California video. They were just several like single stem props and they were barely just coming out of this pot. So <laughs> everything you see here, everything you see here, everything you see in the back, this is all brand new. And um, it's just nonstop growing. But uh, I think I mentioned to you guys that I have mealybugs right now. So I did give these ones like a good spray down. I'm just not sure if I got them all. I think I'm gonna have to be spraying this thing like on a like a weekly basis, maybe even several times a week. I'm not sure if that much alcohol is going to affect the plant that much, especially like emergent leaves, but um, I would much rather make the sacrifice of a few leaves than have mealybugs. They really, really love going to these like new leaf areas but like look at all these cute little guys coming in oh my goodness they're so precious so yeah we're well on the way of having just a massive pot and I think that this is one that I'll probably need to get on a trellis I'm not quite sure if the ones that I if the arca trellises are going to be big enough for this I think the big one actually might fit like right here in the back I will give it a try but I do think it's time because this thing is starting to want to crawl the walls of my Rudsta and I don't really want it to be sort of a permanent fixture in there. I want to be able to take it out, do some checks, repot if I need to. This one is just in a mix of soil and perlite and the roots are amazing, super, super healthy. Uh, this one was a really, really, um, I guess, easy plant to get established as the single stem cuttings but um they were rooted already it was in soil before i basically just took all the soil off to transport it to canada so i already had a head start it's not like i had to reroute these and start all over but yeah i think that right now this one is like my favorite hoya in my collection just because of like how sort of easygoing it's been how much love it's given me how many new leaves come out of this thing literally on a weekly basis and right now I'm not fertilizing in the substrate. I'm only spraying it with the Miracle Grow Orchid Spray. So yeah, that's this guy. Ow, I have a rash on my chest or like eczema and it's like, oh, I'm just scratching the camera. But yeah, it's, it's really, really itchy. Uh, this one's not a Hoya. This is a Zero Sisio Stanguii. And I just wanted to feature this one because of how much it's grown, like, all of this down here is brand new all of this up here is brand new and this one in pond has just done so much better than the one in soil um i think i have the one in soil somewhere i've literally had zero growth on this thing uh, i do think i got this one first but i don't really see how that would make a difference where i've got like tons of new growth on this and just not a single there's not a single thought going through this guy's brain but this one is like it's on a mission and it's like pushing out so many leaves at once i think that this is actually is this a trailing plant like the stems are so stiff that i highly doubt that it would trail so this could be one that i get on a trellis as well but i really wanted to save the trellises for my hoyas so maybe not well since i've got this one here i i don't know the name of this one i think it's splash something <laughs> Uh, I got this one from Jing not too long ago as a one leaf cutting and it's given me these two new guys and this one is so splashy. Sorry, I'm just like on high mealybug alert just making sure I didn't miss it. I mean, I'm sure I missed like 5 million of them, but 
um yeah this one is just really really fun uh i i love the reptilian look of this one plus the splash is just a bonus um i would say that i'm more into the reptilian hoyas more than the splashy hoyas which has sort of worked in my favor because the splashy ones are very very expensive and i i I don't do expensive these days but yeah just a quick feature on this one because i i really didn't expect new leaves so soon because this has been one of my newer acquisitions i think it was still rooting when i got it so to have two brand new leaves um and have one this big is was such a surprise i look like a corpse Okay, so the next one is my Hoya Waiedii, which has been severely, severely attacked by mealybugs, but she really does not give a crap. She has just continued to explode, like absolutely explode with growth. Like this entire stem is brand new. All of this is brand new. All of this is brand new. Like it's crazy. This has like doubled in size since I've gotten it and I did take some trimmings when I first got it from my mom and you can see down at the base there's some new growth coming in as well and it's literally still in the soil that I got it in from Vandula Farms. I haven't changed it at all and I don't really see the need to change it anytime soon given that it's growing so well. Uh, right now, just heavily, heavily um, feeding with the Miracle Grow Orchid Spray. I'm spraying my Hoyas probably twice a week right now since so many of them are growing. And yeah, this one seems to like it. Also, not fertilizing in the soil. So yeah, I think I think the reason I haven't really been fertilizing in the soil is because I don't think the fertilizers that I'm using right now are great for Hoyas. I think I feel like people. I look like a mess. Um, I feel like people in the Hoya world use very specific kinds of fertilizers and to be honest, I'm just not really, I don't have a desire to have another fertilizer or have just have a fertilizer just for my Hoyas. I don't know. I don't want to spend the money. I don't want to spend the time to like have to make Hoya fertilizer. So I don't know. The orchid spray has been working fine for me um, thus far. You can see how big my Hoya abovada has gotten. So. I don't think I'm going to change anything up until maybe I see them suffering. If they if they do, I hope they don't. But yeah, this one is just exploding. Um, I can see probably four or five new growth points down at the base that are just like starting brand new growth. So that's really exciting. This one is definitely like the one that makes my Hoya cabinet look very wild and jungly um, in addition to my Hoya abovada. So I don't think that I will ever have this as a trellis plant. I really, really like it as a trailing plant. So we are just gonna keep it this way and I am seeing a tiny little mealybug here. Oh no. The little baby mealy bugs are quite scary too and especially the ones with like the really long antennas like the antennas are like triple the size of the body that's just so unnatural and disgusting let's do one more this one is a deshidia hirsuta and it's got these nice fuzzy little leaves and they're just so much fun um, i got this one from my friend nessa as like a two leaf cutting i think that this one is like the original cutting on it and then it just pushed out all of this growth and it's pushing out another stem here i don't know if it's gonna wake up but yeah this one's really fun i don't know if this is one that i would want to get on a trellis either i there are some hoyas and some deshidias that i just really enjoy uh trailing so this is probably one that i'm just gonna allow to do its thing maybe eventually i will get this one in a taller vessel so that it can like cascade over the side yeah at first this one was a very very slow grower and then just one day it decided to take off the only thing that i'm quite confused about though and i don't know if this comes with maturity or whatever but you can see some of these older ones these bigger ones are like they're like puffed they're like cereal like puffy cereal but then these ones here are like completely flat like there is no kind of puffiness to them they're just completely flat so yeah i don't know i want to pop one of these so bad i just have the desire to just like crush it i just want to see what it feels like but I'm, obviously i'm not going to do it it's just these weird 
human tendencies it's like cute aggression you know so those were just some highlights uh, i would show you my hoya publicalic splash i'll show you in a little bit when i take you back there but that one has been exploding with growth and then oh there's one thing i do want to show you do you guys remember probably not do you guys remember that plant that i got for my friend jen and um i was telling you how like on these little edges here, I thought that like little balls would form or whatever. They have arrived. The balls have landed. I screamed so loud when I saw these balls in my cabinet. I was like jumping for joy. They're the cutest little... Oh, they're so cute. I don't... I just... I can't. They're so cute. I want to... I want to squeeze it. I'm going to pop it. I wish they all grew little balls, but you know what? I'll take three balls over no balls. But this one has... If there's one thing I hate in this world, it's hair in my mouth. Yeah, this one has inspired me to take care of it more. So I do think I'm going to get it out of this vessel and get it into some newer pond that has my slow-release fertilizer and into something a little bit nicer than this. But yeah, I'm just so freaking happy with this. These balls just, they are everything. They are everything to me. They're my world. Anywho, that is the highlights. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Just kidding. So, okay. Um, what am I going to do here? I, <laughs> I don't have the willpower. I don't. I don't. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I guess, is just clean out the red stuff. It is filthy in there, it's nasty. And I just wanna get everything sort of spruced up and I might sort of shuffle things around a little bit. But I will be seeing Lauren soon and she, and she has some new additions for my red stuff. So uh, this is gonna be sort of a temporary setup, obviously, until I can get everything that I need. If you move my tripod, boy, you have this entire apartment and you want to sit under my tripod. Um, yeah, she's got some new additions for my cabinet. So yeah, this will definitely be more of just a temporary setup and just to get everything in. Oh, my buddy. I think I'm going to have another cup of coffee. I might eat a little bit and um, maybe watch an episode of Teen Mom and then I will start working i just i need to like power up a little bit i'm feeling i'm feeling a little bit um drained still so just give me a minute to wake up and then i will just get straight into cleaning i'm probably going to time lapse the entire cleaning part and also putting it back because what else is there to say you know so anywho be right back so i've had lunch i literally just scarfed down like a million pizza rolls <laughs> I think my body is legitimately telling me to slow down because which video would it have been? My, um, there's a video that I would have posted recently. It's hard to remember and keep track when I'm filming so far in advance. Um, but I have been filming so much that my voice has actually been going and I haven't had like my proper voice in probably two weeks now <clears throat> so i think new change of plans for today is just i'm gonna repot some of these hoyas on my new trellises because i think it makes more sense to put the trellises in before i clean out the hoya cabinet and get everything back in so that's what i'm gonna do i've got two of the trellises here in two different sizes these are the two largest sizes one in clear and then one in this smoky black color <clears throat> and yeah i think i'm just gonna do that get the hoya cabinet uh nice and refreshed and then i'm probably gonna call it a day on filming for today and i just need to go easy on myself i started a new book last night so i kind of want to just lay in bed and read a little bit before i start editing for the rest of the night or day but okay here's the plan with this Hoya Abovada I don't really want to have to repot this because it's not super root bound yet it's got plenty of space but the issue is that 
this is wider than the pot itself but if I do something a little bit thinner that can literally just squeeze into the pot it's not it's only going to be getting like two of the vines so like look how teeny this is compared to where the stems are so this one makes more sense because it's so funny you cannot see it it's clear this size actually captures all of the stems that are starting to crawl upward i don't know if it's going to be a matter of trying to squeeze it into here and it being sort of pinched in and it does have some give or if i want to just try and like do a taping situation i don't know but i'm kind of inclined to sort of squeeze it a little bit just to fit it inside of the pot let me change the angle a bit you can't see anything <laughs> let's try this first attempt um i'm gonna just see if it'll <clears throat> go in here the only thing is that i don't want it to be pushed back it's really hard when you're working with an established plant and also i have never put a Hoya on a trellis before. I almost feel like, no, I don't want to repot it. Okay. Even if I can get three of these stems onto a pole, I'll be happy. So what if I just try and, I just don't want to snap any of these leaves. It's like if you just bend a Hoya the wrong way, it's like just sap galore. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this little guy in there, unfortunately. I'm gonna try and squeeze this one here. I am already guessing I'm gonna break at least one thing in this endeavor. Okay, I'm thinking like this, right? Now I'm just gonna push it down. I think I'm gonna clip all three of these to one side. That's actually quite sturdy and it's not even in there all the way. I've got these little clips here from her. So I'm gonna use the clear clips. This is so fun. Okay, let's do this one first. I'll just clip it right here. And then it is leaning forward quite a bit. I think I need to move this one, hold on, there, okay. It was leaning forward quite a bit, so now it's straight, okay. Uh, oh, now it's like, and I think I'm gonna even just like bend this around the trellis. I just wanna be very careful because there are little tiny emergent leaves on this one. And then I'm also gonna clip these ones, if I can. I'm gonna use all the clips on just this plant. Try not to break any of these aerial roots. And then, I think I can clip both of these into this one. Gosh, I'm so nervous. That. Okay, and then um, I think I can use this one to clip around both. I will say that is not freaking bad. I feel like I can probably go like this, shrivel like this. Screw it, let's do it. I'm gonna use all my clear clips. I can always buy some clips anyway. Oh, I can see some sap. Oh no. The only thing that I'm a little sad about is that this little guy back here is not gonna be able to be clipped in. But to be fully honest, I think that when I go to repot this one anyway, I'm gonna get it into something wider and then I'll move this stem somewhere in the front. So. I'm not gonna worry about that too much, but now, look, he's all like compact and bushy and full, and I gotta take a photo of this for Instagram because this is amazing. It's clear, it's clear. I love it, it's genius, it's amazing. 
I feel like I've been trying to fight the trellises for so long, but so many of my Hoyas are like, we need something. And I'm just like, no, no, no. Kind of like this guy. He's like, bro, I, I'm, where, where do I have left to go? And you know what? These sticks always for these like runner things always dry the heck out on me. So I actually think I'm going to repot this one because I'm not liking it in this plastic pot. And I don't think the root system is massive. I don't think. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh my god, I'm going to get ripped in the face. Hoy roots confuse me. They always look so stringy and dead. Whoa. Oh, I think some of these are dead. Oh, it's just falling off. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Child? Are you okay? Ew. Ew. Don't set it in. The lawn mowers are here. I know you guys can hear that. I know you can. Okay, so I've got actually a lot, a lot of rotten roots. Not rotten, but they're just like falling off. But I can see lots of new roots too, so that's good. But I think this is why this plant hasn't done anything or grown in so long. I'm gonna try chopping it and see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. I'm gonna chop this bottom off because it's looking a little bit suspectful. <laughs> I'm gonna try and prop it up so you guys can see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So down here, it's like black and stuff. Don't see any new roots coming from there. They're all at the top here. Oh yeah, that's dead. You can see how dyed it is. Let's cut more and see what we're working with. Because all of the new roots are up there. Okay, now I see sap, which is good. That's how I know it's alive up there. So I just wanna like clean this up a little bit, but like all these roots up here are new and they look okay. So I'm gonna dip this in my callusing hormone and then get it repotted. I guess I should make sure that this trellis fits into this vessel. Um, I honestly think I could go for a smaller one. I am gonna trim this top part off that's just completely dried out. I'm gonna use my new scoop. It's the little, ow. It's the little things in life, you know? And then, trellis. I don't know how I wanna position this, it's kind of an awkward sort of. Maybe I need to go on one side like that and then go like that. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Ah. Easier. Okay, I think I'm gonna clip this so that it's out of my way. I'm gonna use one of these black clips. I'm so happy. Who knew? Who knew I was a trellis girl? All right, so it's in. Now I think what I'm gonna do is wrap this around this way. I'm just trying to be very careful. I'm new, I'm new to this hoy, this trellis thing and I don't know how far I can push these little runners. I think I got a clip on top to keep that curve, you know? And then clip down here. This is how you trellis. 
And now the new growth point is all the way down there. Um, whatever. It's trellised. Can you guys tell I'm fading? This is usually the time of day where like my brain is like, all right, we've been awake for too long. So anyway, um, yeah, I am, guys, I rate these trellises 10 out of 10. I really, I knew that I was gonna love it when I saw it, but obviously like through photos and stuff, you can't test quality and like, you don't really know until you get it. But I do really, really enjoy these trellises. I think that they're gonna look great in the red stuff and I couldn't be happier. These are my new trellises. Now we need to go clean the cabinet even though I'm fading quickly. I need to just force myself to do it or else my Hoyas are gonna be outside for too long. So, meet you back in the living room. Say hello. Hi. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Is this your friend? Don't knock over my camera.
Hi. <laughs> um, the video that you guys are watching right now is being filmed on uh, the front facing camera of an old iPhone, so the quality might not, might not be great. So yeah, I'm just filming another video today. As you can see, uh, Pudge is right next to me. Hi, are you gonna film today? No. Yeah, is that a yes? Okay, come up then. Whoa. I know, I know, hold on, I'm not ready yet. I have to go get my drink. I know, you're excited. Um, it's all camel toe. It's all camel toe. Hold on, buddy. Okay. See there. I have so many holes in my socks. Oh, my word. Oh, boy. Do you want to come sit on my lap? <laughs> you can't have this. You can't have this. Oh my gosh, my hands are so dry. Okay, good work, team. Comfy? Hiccups. Oh, I can't believe I'm filming. Okay. Get into it. My love, my love. I am back with my trusty pug pudge today as you can tell by the title I am going ugh, I'm not I'm not looking at the lens cut okay I think ugh, I can't say this I think in the winter those uh, get the get the words out we just need to get the words out right say I can do this I can do this you're so cute so cute. Okay, one or two of those mother light. I might. I can't. I can't get my words out. Okay. Before everything gets too. Why was that the most difficult thing in the world? You guys, look at how pitiful these socks are. I can't see if I'm in the frame, but. These are my favorite socks of all time and I haven't replaced them because I can't find these ones exactly. They're from Forever 21, but there are holes everywhere in the toes, in the heels. Pitiful.
All right, so I'm in the middle of filming. That little bit I did right here is probably the most cringe thing I've ever done. But you know what? We're, we're, we're climbing out of the depression hole. I was looking for my drink. Um, hi, Pudge. Hello. Hi, are you having a good day? Today's a good day, huh? I'm not as sad as yesterday. Does that make you happy? <laughs> um, yeah, the weather's nice today. And like I told you guys, my mood drastically changes when the sun is out. And when I took him for a walk earlier, we just laid on a bench and I just soaked in the sun and it was so nice. So anyway, I wanted to show you sort of the chaos that ensues during uh, YouTube filming. This is why I'm always so exhausted because most filming days, to be honest, are like this, if not five times worse. But it's fun. I mean, I can't complain. This is a job, right? This is our job. You want to give everyone a high five? You haven't given everyone a high five in so long. High five. Oh, high five. You don't want to? High five. Okay, well. I'm still on my iPhone if you're wondering about video quality, but I am still in the middle of filming this video. I probably have a couple hours left, maybe two or three hours left of filming. And what time is it? It is two o'clock, so it'll be close to five by the time I'm done. And I'll wanna just clean up the space and try and figure out what I'm gonna cook for dinner. So the likelihood of me having energy to do other planty things today is probably really low and I don't want to force it just because I'm filming a week of, but I have a lot of plants that still need care this week, it's like, urgent and then um obviously i think just by my outfit you guys probably know which video i'm filming right now so i i have a bunch of plants that i'm getting rid of that aren't going to my family that i'm gonna try to sell locally so i have to prep those plants and just you know get them out of here so i think that's gonna be the plan for tomorrow but i think in terms of more plant to do's today that is about it so I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good freaking morning, everyone. Um, as you would have seen, I did take a day off of week of yesterday. So it's Thursday. Um, I decided to just take the entire Wednesday to finish editing and uploading the video that I recorded on Tuesday. Um, which is good because now I have one video left for the month of June. June? Yeah, June. And then probably by this weekend or next week, I'll start filming my videos for July. So um, I think that if I can keep this pace going within the next month, I should, in theory, have videos ready to go up until September by the time that I leave for California in August. That's really the only reason why I've been pushing like crazy. It's because I just don't want to stress about it uh, when it's time for me to take vacation and spend time with the new baby. Anyway, now I am left with the destruction of what has been a crazy few, obviously days of depression and not taking care of my space and then filming back to back. I have got plants everywhere and you will see when I take you back a little bit, I'm probably just gonna time lapse the entire cleaning of my plant room, which is really my only to-do list thing for today's week of. Um, I think now that my, my table, you can see it's pretty far out and that's because I stick the tripod behind the camera no, <laughs> I stick the camera behind the table. So since everything is set up, I think um, I'll just leave it as is. And then maybe we'll do like one or two repots before I call it a day on week of. And then I'll just see you Friday. But yeah, that's what today is. So I guess I'm just going to start cleaning. <laughs>
if I got a dollar for every time I said it's freaking hot in this plant room, I wouldn't even need to do YouTube anymore. Um, okay, so the plant room is as clean as it's gonna get for now. I just, I told you guys, I have a lot going on. So what you're looking at behind me, some of them are rehab plants from Nick. Uh, some of them are plants that I purged or will purge from my shelf and just from around the apartment. Some are plants I'm going to be bringing to California. It's just kind of a mix of everything. Some are rehabs. And this is my goal for the rest of June. Yeah, we got a lot to do. Sorry, I wasn't liking that angle. So yeah, I think I'm just going to start tackling things one by one. I am contemplating if I want to do a dedicated video on just the plants that I'm purging and kind of take you through the process of purging, like showing actually doing it in our Facebook group. And I don't know, I don't know how interesting that would be, but um, I think I'll hold off on any purge plants for now. Um, but I do have some rehabs I still need to tend to. So, oh gosh. I like don't even know, okay, I guess I could start here. So this is one of the plants that I recently got from um, Lauren at North Shore and it seems to have mealybugs. So I think that I'm going to treat this one today and just give it a little bit of love. I'm kind of thinking about getting this one trellised, but I'm not quite sure. I am being so stingy with my trellises. She sent me like a million of them, but I'm just like, I'm gonna run out. So I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, let's just tackle that one. Oh man, this one's so dry. Um, the way that I'm going to handle this is just doing a soak in not quite 50-50 um, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol um, and water, but sort of like just water and a splash of the alcohol just because, I don't know, I still get so freaked out doing that. I've only had one plant that reacted badly to that treatment and that's because I left it in there for two days. All right, let me prepare this solution really quick and blow my nose. Maybe I will prop this up for you guys. One day I'll figure out the perfect filming angle when I film here, but I've got bigger fish to fry. So I'm going to be pouring just a little bit. So yeah, not quite 50-50, but definitely enough to take a bath, for them to take a bath in it and be like, what is this? Okay. And I'm hoping that I can, I can see some mealies floating to the top so I can show you. With my luck, there's gonna be none, watch. Mm. Come on, you mother I know you're in there. Well, this is awkward. Not a single mealy. I did sort of take a Q-tip and like swab some away, but I was like so sure I did not get all of them because there were like six of them. Come on, really? The one time. Oh crap, what time is it? Alice is picking up something at noon. And my phone is on silent. Ah. Oh. Um, I don't see any, you guys. Some of them look like they could be mealybugs, but they're like little fine pieces of perlite. Oh well. I guess I can take this opportunity to just clean off the roots, because I do want to move this to choose upon dang not even one son of a you guys i cannot tell you how nice it is to emerge from <laughs> that depressive episode i thought that that one good day that i had on tuesday was going to be it and then i'd go back to being like in a crappy mood but she's going on strong i think the main difference this time is that on tuesday usually when i have a good day i just have negative thoughts of like, this is temporary, this isn't going to last, tomorrow you're going to feel like crap, like, don't get used to it, like, those kinds of thoughts always go through my head, like, I can just not enjoy the good day usually because I'm just so anxious about 
the next day, you know, and I'm not really living in the moment and just enjoying it and being grateful for it. So on Tuesday, I just try to block out all of those thoughts. Um, I listen to some of my favorite music ever and um, yeah, I've just, luckily it's been, it's been all good since Tuesday. I started reading again, which is amazing. Um, ever since I filmed the Assumptions About Me video where someone said like, oh, I think that you're like a crazy avid reader, whatever. Um, I was like, I need to get back into reading because I just remembered like sort of how calming it was. And granted my attention span is like so f painfully short now, but I'm trying, I'm trying. It's definitely taking me a lot longer to get through the book of this size that I'm reading right now. And I'll throw up the book that I'm reading at the moment. It's, you know, before in my like, I guess, heavy reading days, I would have blasted through this book in probably two to three days, but I'm going on like a week now. But you know, we're getting through it. Uh, just be warned that if you are a, a survivor of SA, it might be a triggering book for you. I did not know the plot of this book. I didn't know what I was getting into when I picked it up. I literally just grabbed a book from my shelf and I was like, I'm going to read this one without reading the synopsis or what it was about. So I was uh, not pleasantly surprised. I will say that. I was like, oh crap, this is where this book is going. Yeah, it was, um, it was a surprise, but you know, I'm getting through it and it's been okay. Um, I am really enjoying the book so far. It's a, it's a great book. So if you need a recommendation, but just, you know, be warned, it, it is sort of a heavier book. Not one mealy bug. This is the one time where I wanted to see one and there is not a single one, which is so freaking annoying. Let's just pretend that there were a bunch of mealy bugs and now I'm, I'm treating them. So I'm gonna just leave it in that solution for probably about 30 minutes and I will handle something um, in the meantime. You know what? I should start tending to some of the plants on my plant shelf because I said I was gonna do that slowly. I want to repot some. I need to treat them all for spider mites. I need to treat them all for thrips because I did find one plant with thrips. So um, I'm not gonna just be like doing it all in like a big batch. Like I don't want it to be a stressful process because it's already sort of a stressful process. So I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start, what you call? Maybe I'll start with like two of them to treat. This one desperately needs a larger vessel because it dries out so fast and I just need to kind of get it cleaned. Like it just looks unruly and crazy. I'm hoping I can maybe get a larger vessel so that I can wrap it around. There's just a lot going on here and some of them have like crazy long runners, but I don't really want to chop it just because, I don't know, rooting skindapsis is not my favorite thing in the world. Like, look at this. We've got three leaves, long runner, and then two leaves. And then here, we've got three leaves, a weird sort of swirly thing going hap happening, and then two leaves, and then one. It's like, what, what, what's the goal here? So that's one that I was gonna handle today. And then another one is this Ripsalis paradoxa that I just think is it's too much too much algae I am going to I think keep it in this same vessel, but I want to just give it some fresh pond I do have a cover pot for it now. So the algae should uh, Not be anywhere close to this in the new vessel, but yeah, let's just um, Let's just do that part the roots look really good but there are some dyed roots that I can see on here so I am just going to clean it up a little bit but I want to get all this perlite off and honestly I want to chop it so bad I wonder if it'll just root in lechuza pond 
I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. I'm just talking to myself now. Yeah, I'm gonna do it because I the way that this is growing is giving me it's giving me the ick. I'm going to chop it. Oh my gosh, I really don't want to do this. Obviously here because there is a crazy long runner, and I'm gonna root it. I'm gonna chop this note off, and I'm not gonna keep it because I do not need more propagations in my life. So there's one, and then I definitely want to chop it where it's all twisty and weird like this. So let's chop it here, and then um, again here, and then I'll just leave this and put the whole thing in there, and then um, I think I'm going to chop it again. So I've got this, this that I will add in there, and then I'll stick this in as is, and is so friggin long I guess I could just kind of bend it like that whatever I'm not gonna worry about it too much but I do want to get these roots sort of cleaned up because there's a lot of dead roots Ugh. okay so that one is ready and now I'm going to unpot the Ripsalis Paradoxa. Oh, please don't screw this up, Sherman. Ow, that one's really in there. I think I need my thing. Oh my gosh. I'm actually really hungry. I can feel my tummy rumbling. You're probably, you can probably hear Pudge snoring like a hippo in the background. Let's take off all this left over. I'm sorry that you can't see anything I'm doing. Ah. Okay, I think it is loose enough. This is gonna spill everywhere, just just you watch. messing this one up it's been growing so well the last several months but I figure since I'm not seeing any active growth really it's like the perfect window just gonna try and loosen up some of this old pond and truly when you're doing like um, repots and transplants if it's going from the same substrate to the same substrate there's not like a huge Honest, in my uh, experience, there's not like a massive difference between just leaving the substrate on and just plopping it into the the new substrate, but it's more of like an OCD thing for me. I just like things to start fresh and brand new, especially with soil. Like let's say you have a massive root ball, right? Like I feel like all of that soil in there that's like, like not nutritious anymore, it's just old, like the bark has started to decompose, like it's taking up so much space in that pot where those roots could be sort of um, surrounded by new soil and like new uh, good bacteria and stuff. But it, it's not it's not like a huge difference, honestly. Sometimes when you're repotting those big guys and you try and like break apart that root ball, you're doing more damage than good and you send it into like unnecessary stress. So yeah, like, I'll try and especially like on big plants, I'll try and just loosen up as much as I can at the bottom of the root ball. I kind of poke some holes in between like the big root ball area, but that's um that's pretty much that's pretty much it. And then I'll just plop it into the new pot and then all the new roots that come out from the bottom and the sides that I've loosened up will be able to like be in that good soil and um yeah. It's really at the end of the day I think it's really just your preference but it's not like plants in the wild are being repotted all the time and yeah it's just they get what they get all right so this is good um I have some sort of old dead roots but 
nothing sort of out of the ord <laughs> out of the ordinary. So I just need to clean my vessel again because I just looking at this root system, like I don't see why it would need to be in anything bigger than that still. But uh, yeah, I do need to figure out what my Jade Satin Skin Dapsis is going to be potted in. So just give me one second. I'm FaceTiming my niece right now and she is in the worst mood. She's just screaming and hollering and she doesn't want anyone to talk, but she wants us to stay on FaceTime. So I just have her on watching her eat, but I do need to kind of get the ball rolling on this. So hopefully she doesn't freak out that I turned my mic off. But you know, sometimes toddlers just have those days. I do have, oh, she's looking at me like, why is your lips moving and I can't hear you? Oh no. Hi, Amelia. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm just saying the wrong thing. Looking at her the wrong. Tensions are high. Okay, I'm gonna turn my mic off. Damn, she pissed. Oh! Oh no, I'm so I'm scared of her. She wants it to be absolutely silent, but shh. But she also doesn't want my mic to be muted. I hate arranging freaking trailing plants in a new basket, basket, pot. I think I could just go like that. Whatever, it's just in the back of my shelf. Where do I put this one? Oh my god, you're piss, piercing me off. Mother. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, 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 start over. So let's start with, it's this freaking curly guy that's throwing the whole thing off. So I think I just need to bend it like this and just keep it, keep it bent. And then I can maybe squish him in here. I know you guys can't see it, but you're not potting it, okay? <laughs> This is high stress. This is high stress times. Do I want to go like that? Yeah, I kind of want to. I think I want to put it underneath. What? And then I'll go like this. I think it'll eventually all find its way. But for now, she cannot. She can't be bothered. You know what? That's that's the one. That's the one. Now I just need Myco. lunch finished up my call with my niece who was not happy today oh my gosh I don't remember the last time I've seen her that um upset and just she's just having a day you know as you do so anywho um this guy is potted I'm not really liking how it's sort of going that way but we're not we're not going to make a fuss about it there are certain things in life that I can't be bothered by, and this is truly one of them. My little guy's in here, so. Um, yeah, I put it in this ugly pot because I actually do have a black cover pot for this one, so I'll just put that in there. And then um, now I'm going to repot this one. Ooh, I don't know I like that sound. Okay. I really don't know the effectiveness of granular systemic um, with lechuzapon or any kind of non-soil substrate, but I just do it anyway because it makes me feel better. 
So I'm just gonna apply some systemic to prevent thrips. And then I will water this in in about 20 minutes because I still have some fresh cut stems in here and I don't want them to absorb water right away. So, okay, next one. I was going to film a YouTube video today, but I am sort of rethinking the concept of it. So I'm gonna table that for tomorrow instead. Um, I just kind of need to rethink some things, look at the schedule and just make sure that um, it's what I wanna do or if I want to switch it up a little bit. I would do my purge video on Friday, but that one is like a huge, that's a huge project. That one's probably gonna be like a two hour video or maybe like a part one, part two. And to be fully honest with the week that I've had, I, don't, I just don't think that I'm <laughs> not only like mentally capable of filming a video like that right now, but even like physically like it's gonna be very very tiring it's gonna be a lot of work and it might honestly be like a weekend long project so I don't know I might do that this weekend but I do plan on cutting off the week of plant to do's on Friday I think in the last plant to do's I was filming for like eight days straight and it really does take it out of really takes it out of me it's crazy how like I, I really don't understand the algorithm or what people want but like the week of plant to do's has been my most successful series on the um, on the channel, and it's weird because one of like some of them will get like ten thousand views in a week. Like there's one week of plant to do's that I think is like getting close to forty thousand views now. But just in general, they've been very well performing. Um, but the last week of plant to do's I did is just it tanked. It did so awful. So I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what it is. I've had um, people message me and DM me saying that they haven't been watching my videos or like they're not caught up or they just, they're taking a, a YouTube break or a social media break. And I get it. There are, you do not need to explain yourself. I am not, I am not good at staying on top of, um, watching even some of my favorite youtubers like i have to really be in the mood to watch their videos so i actually find it so um mind-blowing that there are so many of you that are like right there like right when it goes live at 10 a.m wednesdays and saturdays you guys are there all the time like that honestly blows my mind it's crazy because i guess i'm just not that type of person so to me it's like really special when people are just like just like waiting for the videos to come out like that's crazy so yeah don't explain yourself if you haven't been watching you do not owe anyone an apology especially not me you take your break you decompress detach regenerate do what you have to do because the videos will always be there they're not going anywhere you can watch it whenever you want whenever you're feeling like you want to watch it but yeah, I guess I'm just saying, like, don't apologize for saying, like, oh, sorry, like, I haven't been watching and blah, blah, blah. Like, you do you, bestie. All right. Oh, it's so nice to see this guy in a, in a clean vessel. Holy smokes. Okay, so the last one that I have to do is, I'm just, like, holding this one very awkwardly, is is this Hoya, Hoya? I don't remember which one this is called, but I do need to pot it up, the one that's been in alcohol. This vessel is so dirty, I don't even care. These roots don't look great, but I think it's gonna bounce back okay in the choose upon, hopefully. I really do love this guy, and it was a gift from Lauren, so. I don't want to lose it, but yeah, I did have a pretty bad case of mealybugs, or I do have a bad case of mealybugs in my register right now, and you know, it happens. I think I need to go higher on the substrate. So um, in terms of the plan for tomorrow, since I am going to be 
not filming any more today. I think tomorrow is just going to be sort of plant room maintenance day. Um, not in terms of cleaning like I just did, but like watering plants. So I think I'll just take you through um, me kind of just caring for plants. And there are some anthuriums that are really, really struggling. Um, I repotted a few of them and they just freaking hated it. So it's weird because as sad as I am to see some of these anthuriums die back, a small, a large part of me has sort of this weird sense of relief that like the big leaves are going to die off and then I'll be just back with the stump and then it'll come back because for one, space is limited. I'm feeling very extended for my sort of attention. Like I'm just running a little bit, I'm stretching myself thin. So to just kind of have like a stick again and just tuck it away somewhere and wait till it comes back when it's ready, that does not sound too bad to me. You know, I'm not saying that I like when my plants die, but I almost feel like our ecosystem is keeping a balance. Oh man, I don't know. I'm very mentally ill, just don't listen to me. So, anywho, yeah, this guy is in, and I think that it's going to be much happier in here. I am kind of thinking of getting a trellis on this. Should I? Damn it, I should have done that before. Another one of the cool trellises that I got are these mirrored ones. Um, so I got clear, the smoky black, and then these cool mirror ones. So I might just stick this here. I honestly, truly should have done this before. I just didn't think that I was gonna trellis it. These are so pretty. Um, I need my clips. I think I'll use the clear ones. I'm gonna have to order some more of these clear clips. Um, let's do this one here. And then this one. That looks pretty freaking great. So cool. I really like these mirrored ones. I honestly didn't even realize I had mirrored ones until recently. I thought they were all clear, smoky, gray. I don't know how I missed it, but anyway, yeah, these are done. So we're just, you know, slowly but surely, we're going to get to a point where everyone on the shelf has been repot and treated for pests and um, had systemic reapplied, but it's going to be a slow, a slow moving process because pest management and doing preventative stuff can feel very much like a chore. It can feel overwhelming, but I think if you just use that mentality that I try and have like when it comes to my mental health is just like one day at a time, one thing at a time. And, um, you know, eventually they'll all get done. So I have a full on, like I, I have pests right now. I have almost every single kind of pest you can think of. Mealybugs, thrips, spider mites, but we're chilling. We are chilling. Um, but yeah, I almost feel like I need to start a log of who I've treated and do like an inventory so I can keep track because when you have this many plants, it really is very, very hard to like remember who's been given systemic, who's been, you know, treated for what, like, so yeah, I might have to do some sort of like actual physical log just to keep track. So yeah. Okay. So these are done. <sighs> A million more to go. But for now, I think I'm gonna get out of here. I'm just going to, I don't know, I don't know. I honestly might just go take a nap um, and then just finish editing the video I'm working on tonight. And then, yeah, we got a long day tomorrow though. I think I just, oh, there's a lot of plants that need my attention in terms of just basic watering and stuff. So yeah, see you Friday. Have you come to put dog hair all over me? Okay, come here. Let's say hello to your friends since we're gonna be ending this video soon. Hi. Okay, so hello everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, it's actually Friday night now. We've had a pretty full day. Um, I've had a good day. I 
really haven't done anything plenty today. I pretty much just woke up, started cleaning, started doing all my house chores, laundry, vacuuming, mopping, blah, blah, blah. And then we took a little midday nap. I read my book and then had dinner and now we are here. So yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, the only thing on the schedule for today is to just kind of give some love to my plants around the plant room. You can see behind me, I've got some very angry anthurium leaves that were repotted recently so i have to see what's going on with those i watered everything in my tent yesterday so those are good but i do need to do some watering on my props and all of these greenhouses behind me so that's what we're gonna do and i think i'll maybe just kind of show you some things i'm excited about right now and maybe show you some plants that are not so happy and yeah we'll just hang out and have a good last day of week of and um one thing i did want to talk about and i can't remember if i mentioned this earlier but i got him a little va vacuum de-shutter thing and guys i love it i love it so much i will show it to you in a bit once he is off my my lap but i was gonna try and get a video of me doing it in action but he was like really stressed the first time and um, I don't know I just didn't really feel like recording I just we were just having a moment and then I did it again today but I was like half naked basically I wasn't wearing a bra and like I was wearing a see-through shirt so obviously I wasn't gonna record but it works really great I left all the hair in the vacuum for you to see I'll kind of just show you how it works and I don't know I just feel like a lot of people on this channel have pets so if I can find a way to ease your fur problems, I will just give you my little review and just show you how it works. I'll throw a timestamp up if you want to skip this part though. But my little buddy, he's so cute. He's had diarrhea for like two days, but he finally had a somewhat um, solid poop today, huh? Good job, we're letting it pass. But he's just such a trooper. All right, friends, it's time to say bye to Pudge. Did you have fun saying hi to all your friends this week? Do you want to be in more videos? <laughs> yeah, okay, I love you. I love you so much. Oh, okay. you actually want to use it? He was actually really good the second time when we did it today. He was really relaxed. He was actually falling asleep, so that's a good sign. Ew, my hair is in here. So this is the Neobot, and it was a damn ad that got me on Instagram. I just, I was like, okay, this thing seems too perfect, but I'm willing to give it a try because if you didn't know, um, pugs shed so much and it's not like they have a shedding season they just shed year round there's hair all over my apartment it's never ending so this little thing is basically a like de-shutter plus vacuum so obviously you plug it in it's not battery powered you plug it in there's two sort of strengths there's like regular and then max strength and then it's got this little nozzle here here is what it comes with comes with the de-shedding tool which works so well for Pudge and I will quickly, uh, I'll throw it up at the end maybe. Um, I'll, th I'll throw up a video of my mom using it on Jupiter. It works so well if you have cats. Um, it comes with this little nozzle because you can use this as a vacuum as well to like get all the fur that you know you combed around you. It comes with this brush which is just for like the surface hairs so that one gets all the undercoat and then this one captures like that top layer of fur and then this is for your clothes and it works really well so i was wearing all black um well i was wearing black shorts and a white top when i was de-shedding pudge and my black shorts were like just all pudge's hair so i just use this and i turn the vacuum on and i just kind of yeah, it just removed all the fur, which was amazing. And then here's another thing. I kind of wish that they sold parts separately, like you can make your own kit, but it's really just you buy the whole kit and it's one price and that's it. But it does come with like a like a shaver thing, like for dogs that need trimming. Pudge never needs trimming, but like there's clippers with it and the clippers attach to the vacuum as well. So while you're you're clipping it's like 
getting sucked into the vacuum and you're, you don't have mess all over the place. So um, I don't know when I'd ever use this, but it comes with it. So how it works is you just clip it onto this little nozzle and then you turn, I'm not going to turn it on, but you turn it on and it just starts suctioning right away. You calm, you calm, all the fur gets stuck right here and then you click this, it pushes all the hair forward and it sucks it into here. It's amazing and this is how much I got after two sessions with it. Like, that is a lot of fur. I want to take it out but I don't really want fur everywhere but I kind of want to show you how much is in here. Never actually unclipped this before. Oh, wow, that was easy. And then I think you just unclip it here. So all of this would have ended up somewhere in my apartment. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna take my hair out of there. Whoa, look at all of this fur. Sorry, I don't do well. Oh God, it's on me. I don't do well with hairs. I have like a legit OCD to it, so I'm slightly triggered. But yeah, it gets so much hair. It works so well. If you have and if you have a dog that has anything shorter than Pudge's fur, I don't think that it's worth the investment. Just because sometimes when you press the little button for it to suction into the vacuum, it doesn't go in automatically. I kind of have to help it and push it with my finger. But like for my mom's long haired cat, long haired cat, she presses it and just sucks right in. So let me throw up a video of my mom using it. Well, I'll go here. Well, I don't like hair. Um, I'll throw up a video of my mom using it on Jupiter and you can kind of see how well it works with her cat. So this, I think that I paid 159 USD for this, which might seem a bit steep, but honestly, it's a great investment for me. It's going to take off a lot of stress on my Dyson and um, just a lot of stress on me, to be honest. Like, I, the one thing that really stresses me out about our apartment is all the hair. My hair, my husband's hair, but mostly Pudge's hair because he sheds so much. So anyway, yeah, that's the end of my little sales pitch. No, I am not sponsored. I don't get, I'm not an affiliate. I get nothing from telling you this. It's just, I got sucked in by an ad. I really, really like it. It works so well. And um, I just thought I'd put you guys on. <laughs> so again, it's called the Neobot and I will also link it in the description below. Again, not an affiliate. I don't get money from this. It's just. I paid money <laughs> to have this um, and I have no perks. So uh, yeah, just an honest review. I really enjoy it. So <sighs> get yourself one if you can. Okay, let's get started. Um, I'm honestly just gonna start going through and watering, but I think before I do that, cause I just wanna time lapse the whole watering thing so I don't stop and blah, blah, blah. And we can just get through it because it is 9.30 and I have to take a shower. It's gonna be my first shower of the week. I know that's gross, but hi, depression. Um, yeah, I have to take a shower and my husband and I wanna watch a movie tonight. So uh, I gotta blaze through this, but I do wanna kinda of show you guys some things that are making me very happy right now. Um, it's kind of like a plant room favorites embedded in a week of plant to-dos. I just knocked over a pot with pond. Everything is fine, Pudge. Don't you worry. All good. Nope, all good. It is all good. I know, I know. Did I scare you? I know, that was an accident. Sorry. First thing I'm very excited about is my Philodendron SP Columbia. One of four. Wow, it's very thirsty. So um, I would have shown this one pretty recently in my my uh, easiest philodendron video, but in that video you didn't see the new leaf, 
So this one just fully opened up yesterday and honestly it looked really t it's not as big as the one that came before it but this looked tiny out of the caterpillar it was like this small and i was like oh my gosh the leaf is gonna be it's gonna be microscopic but it's actually a pretty decent size it's like about as big as my head maybe a little bit larger and uh, it's just so glossy it's beautiful i don't see any spider mite damage which is amazing i don't think this one is getting bleached it still has that sort of yellow tinge that it has when it emerges but um really there's not a ton of light up there so i don't see why it would be getting burned but yeah super super excited about this one this guy is just getting so big and yeah it's uh definitely wanting to crawl now so i'm probably gonna have to get it out of this situation somewhat soon but that's gonna be a problem for another day me. <laughs> Next guy I'm very excited about was this Anthurium crystallinum that was just this leaf for what felt like a year and a half and it's finally dying off. This is the one that it was pushing out like a million different growth points. I think there's like seven or eight different growth points down there and I can see some starting to wake up now. So um, yeah, this one just put out another leaf and it's so long. I love it. This was sold to me as a regular crystallinum, but I'm kind of thinking that this is a crystal black just because the venation doesn't look like my other crystals, but I don't know. There's not like a huge difference, but it's just so nice to see this one sort of come back alive after just being a single leaf for so long. and. That's kind of the reason why I'm not super bummed about a lot of my anthuriums taking a crap recently because for one, I need the space, um, especially for when I go away, it's going to be much easier to have less plants out here. So, you know, and they always come back as long as you keep the chong happy and sometimes it's nice to just start over from a small plant again. So this one has been really rewarding. It's one that I didn't give up on. I gave up on a lot of my crystals, but this is the one that I was like, you know, you've been so good to me. You've been just living out on the living room shelf for so long through the fall and the winter. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just so great that she is just showing signs of new growth and the patience was worth it. And this new coppery leaf is just stunning. Like new crystal, emergent crystal leaves are like probably one of my favorite leaves ever in terms of anthuriums. I really do love anthuriums with like that red emergent leaf or like the really dark emergent leaf which I could show you right now but these coppery ones they just get me all the time. I'm just gonna put this down here because I have to water it anyway. My Ace of Spades also has a new leaf on the way. It's kind of got this funny um, shape to it because it's hitting this petiole and I'm just letting it kind of do whatever it wants to do but yeah, we've got this new leaf and you can see how dark it is and it's just oh, this leaf or this plant is just incredible um this one was one of the ones that got attacked by spider mites typically i don't freak out when it comes to spider mites anymore but when i saw it on this one i was like no stay away but yeah um she's still you know she's got some some leaf damage but otherwise she's like She's looking pretty good. So that's that. And then there's another hybrid that I got from Amanda that is doing so well. This is the Magnificum Crystallinum crossed with a Luxurians. And this lighting in here is not doing it justice. It's so bright back here that you just can't really see how dark it is in real life. But yeah, this one is just so like late and it's just so dark and lovely. And the leaf size growth was pretty like large when I moved it into a larger vessel with tree fern fiber so this was the oldest one um, one of them died off I just plucked it off the other day and then this guy came so I'm noticing some pretty significant size growth but this one has to be one of my favorite anthuriums in my collection it's just oh, I, I actually think I like this more than the Lux on its own I like that it's like it has the texture of the Lux, but it's not super super shiny like the Lux. It's just 
an incredible hybrid. Not as pretty of a background, but I think this lighting is a lot better. So um, I propped this from something and I have recently started labeling my props, but it must have been after I did this one because I have no flippin' idea what this is. It's like, it does not look like any Ethereum that I have. I don't know. I really, I have no, I have no clue what it is, but this was just like a mid prop or a bottom prop. You can see the top was chopped off. This leaf is like pretty huge for just being like a bottom cutting. Um, but anyway, it sprouted and I was like, who the hell are you? Um, so that's pretty exciting. So this next one that I'm excited about is my Dark Phoenix that has come back from the dead. Yes, this is my mother plant. Um, I just, yeah, we went through it a little bit. She has seen better days, but she's back. I didn't know she would bounce back so quickly. Uh, this leaf is probably going to be super tiny. The petiole is really small, but I'm just happy she's alive. Honestly, I, this was one of my favorite plants. It was, uh, I mean, it's a very expensive plant. I didn't pay much for it because I basically swindled Jing on accident. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, anyway, she's back. Not much else to say about it. The next one I'm excited about. I'm going too far. Um, the next one I'm excited about is this Philodendron White Princess. Look at this new leaf. Who does she think she is? Um, yeah, it's weird. In the tent, it was doing this weird sort of like coppery, fungally looking thing. And I didn't know what the heck it was. Um, so I took it out of the tent, I was like, maybe there's too much humidity or something, but uh, I took it out and it seems to be okay. This new leaf is much like wider than any of the other leaves that came before it. So uh, yeah, she's getting mature, the stem's getting long, which is good because this is one of the plants that I definitely want to get onto a pole uh, as soon as like the stem is large enough. Why does my head look so big today? Maybe it's because my hair slipped back so tightly and that's because I need a shower and I look really gross. But anyway, yeah, super, super excited about this one. I always knew this one was going to give me amazing variegation. Um, this was one of the first leaves, leaves? <laughs> this is one of the first leaves to come out on it when I got it from my friend Carmen and I was like, she gave me an incredible specimen and she could have sold this for a good amount of money and she gifted it to me so i just i'm just so thankful for my plant friends so yeah this one is very serotonin inducing who else do i want to show you i have some exciting stuff happening in my tent but i'm trying to just show you the ones that are going on in my plant room um oh yeah okay so uh, this is like i think this is my favorite part of my plant room right now is my soda garden it brings me so much happiness don't mind all the uh, predatory mites on it, but this is the most recent philodendron SP Columbia that I got from um, Lauren at North Shore Tropicals. And I, if you guys don't remember, I purchased this one because I really loved the venation of it. It looks so much different than my other philodendron SP Columbias. And if you want to see a difference between all of my philodendron SP Columbias, you can watch it in my easy most easy going philodendron philodendrons video so this new leaf just came out and look how incredible that venation is it is wild like it is just so vastly different let me grab no i don't want to grab i'm so lazy um but you know you just saw my other philodendron sp columbia and it's like a totally different plant in my opinion uh, it gives me very like philodendron rubrosinctum platinum vibes or that philodendron, I think they're calling it philodendron pastosatum cf or philodendron mame green or something. There's so many out there, but those look more like this plant than a philodendron sp columbia in my opinion. So just loving how big and floofy these leaves are and just, they're just, they're just such great plants. These roots are going, they're going off. This thing needs a pole. Stat. And so continues my love affair for the philodendron Sodoroi and Sodorini. So funny, look at all these leaves. They're sticking straight up like this because the damn grow lights. 
I'm thinking I might try and get a grow light somehow on these doors so that I have some light coming from the front because yeah, it's hard to enjoy, it's hard to enjoy some of my plants when they just So when I would have shown this last, um, this is the last leaf to come out on it and I had mentioned how I believed the new leaf was going to look or was going to be a lot larger because of how large it looked out of the caterpillar and I wasn't wrong. She is definitely a big girl. Look at that ribbing. My goodness. How could you not love this plant? It is so beautiful. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like crazy large, but it is larger than the last one. And the last one I thought was pretty big for a Soderini. Um, I can see the stem is getting significantly thicker. The, the petioles are getting a lot bumpier. So I th honestly think in no time, this thing is just going to look like a full on Soderoi. She's going to need a new pole soon though, because she's already outgrowing this. I think this would be her second or third pole. But uh, yeah, I think once I start getting wider leaves on it, that's when I'm gonna really start screaming every time I see it. But otherwise, all my other Soderinis are just growing like a dream. I feel like I'm always showing you guys sort of the same plants over and over again, and that's because I definitely do have my favorites. I honestly feel like that's it for the highlights. I could show you some that are not doing well. <laughs> I don't know what happened to this. This was a prop from my bigger plant and one day it just I really I really don't know what happened. It was super healthy and happy one day and then the next day it just decided to take an absolute crap. So this is one that I've got to rehab pretty badly. This is my Anthurium Bessier app that I recently Repotted in a video as well. I got it into some new pond and it freaking hates it So this one's like oh this one's freaking rotted at the oh my goodness I Wouldn't I wouldn't doubt if this was rotted all the way to the stem because look at this new growth point It's dead too This new leaf has just mushed off how much further can I get? I don't know what happened with that one, but Bessie is angry. She's really, really mad. Um, who else is unhappy? My crystal black. This is the one that I got into Ina's party pond. My other plants in party pond are doing okay. This one freaking hated it. Dropped all of its leaves. I don't see any new roots. All of the roots that were in here are now rotted. Perfect. Just what I need, more rehabs. At least I have more party pond now. Uh, who else is upset with me? Reveal yourselves. There's more back there, but you know, I can't be bothered. Oh, this one didn't like being transplanted either. Look at this guy. I'm a plant god. Okay. I'm getting depressed now, showing you guys all my fails. So, uh, yeah. I guess now I will set the camera up and I'm just gonna start watering plants and tending to them and I'm just gonna kinda space out and be in my own world and I'm probably gonna forget you guys are watching me, but um, yeah, Friday nights are kind of like the nights where I just really love to just sit and listen to good music and see what's going on with the plants and take care of them so uh yeah let me get started
Oh my gosh, what a freaking week. I can't even, it's weird to think that at the beginning of this week of plant to do's, I was like massively, massively depressed and now I'm only like medium depressed. <laughs> But I feel like I've just like really gone through it and taken you guys along with me. Um, but yeah, it's been one hell of a week. So I am looking around and I'm stressed. I have a box of plants I need to purge. I have a box of plants that need to be treated for spider mites. I have a box of plants that I need to put somewhere because I'm bringing it to California. And I have another box of rotten anthuriums, which was, I can't say it was a huge surprise, but I am confused as to why so many of the anthuriums that I recently repotted just hated everything. So um, I think I have a new video idea. You can guess what that is. But just in general, I have, too, I have too many plants. I have too many plants that need my attention. So it's gonna be another wild week. I was thinking of just filming another week of plant to do's after this week and then put it up in July, but honestly, I need a break. <laughs> filming every day is so exhausting and uh, like now that I'm not doing it headless, I feel like I have to like put my face on and fix my hair a little bit. It's exhausting. The whole process is exhausting. Uh, before I could just like look any way I want and then turn on the camera and just make sure my chest is all good, wear a bra and then we were set but there's a little bit more effort that goes into it these days so anyway thank you guys for sticking around this week i think this is going to be a two and a half three hour video who knows uh but i feel like i've really gone through it it's just yeah picked a very interesting week to film a week of but if you guys watched it all the way through, I don't know how, but you guys are amazing. Thank you for making this series such a fun and successful one on this channel. I am exhausted, I am tired, I'm supposed to be watching a movie with my husband in 30 minutes and I haven't even taken a shower yet, so I've got to get out of here. I'm going to let you go. Thank you guys for being here. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube. I appreciate you all. I love you all. And I will see you in the next one.